Welcome to Program Logic Models. Hello, I'm Becky White, and I'm in the Organization Development and Evaluation Unit at the LSU Ag Center. My role is to assist those who are interested with program development. These web-based training modules are designed to help LSU Ag Center professionals improve their work performance. You might ask, what the heck is a logic model? A logic model is a well thought out plan, a roadmap, if you will, of how you will implement an LSU Ag Center extension program. For the LSU Ag Center, the logic model is considered a staple of our program planning process. Everyone needs to learn how to complete logic models to improve their work. We use logic models every day. We just don't necessarily think of them as logic models. An example is that if you feel thirsty, then you seek out water or some beverage to drink. If you drink that water or beverage, then you feel refreshed and hydrated. Many explain logic models as basic if-then sequences. For extension educators, our logic model might be explained as, if there is a situation or need that needs addressing, then we invest resources to address it. If we invest those resources, then we produce outputs in terms of activities and participation. If we produce outputs in terms of activities and participation, then we achieve outcome and impacts to improve the condition or issue. The LSU Ag Center Extension Service has a program development process that we recommend for all of our program efforts. First, you plan your program thoroughly, then implement carefully, and most importantly, evaluate the program. Each of the program development components are equally important. Developing a logic model is a critically important part of planning your program. All major programs should have a well thought out logic model. A logic model includes several key components. The situation should highlight the issue being considered for programming. Inputs include the investments needed to accomplish the program. Outputs are the program activities that will be done and participation that will occur in the program. Outcomes and impacts are considered to be short-term, medium-term, or long-term. Short-term outcomes are the learning you expect your participants to gain. Medium-term outcomes are the actions that should occur. Long-term impacts are the conditions that the program will contribute toward. Also important to consider are any assumptions and external factors or conditions that exist and will have influence on the program. Finally, you determine what type of evaluation will be used to assess if expected outcomes and impacts are accomplished. So the first step in developing a logic model is to highlight the situation regarding the issue. The situation might include a definition of the importance of the issue, a description of how the issue is identified, an explanation of how education can help address this issue, identifying your target audience, stating any intended outcomes you hope to achieve, highlighting any needs or assets or priorities, and also emphasizing any stakeholder involvement. After highlighting the situation surrounding the issue, you then focus on what outcomes and impacts you hope to achieve. This means completing the logic model from the right side of the logic model schematic and work backwards. So what do you hope to achieve with the program? Long-term effects are considered program impact, and short-term and medium-term effects are considered program outcomes. Impacts and outcomes are about changes in conditions, action, and learning. To complete the impacts and outcomes section, you need to consider what you hope will be achieved as a result of the educational program. First, reflect on the big effects you would expect your program to contribute toward if implemented. These include things like social, civic, economic, and environmental conditions. Second, think about any medium-term outcomes that might result. These would be participant actions you would expect to happen as a result of the program. Actions can include changes in behaviors, practices, policies, decision-making, and social action. Third, consider short-term outcomes or what learning your participants might gain. This would include creating awareness, increasing knowledge, 
changing attitudes, developing skills, changes in opinions, aspirations, and motivations. Next, you complete the output section of the logic model. Outputs encompass the activities that will be offered and who will be targeted for participation. For the outputs component, list your program activities or what you plan to do. You might plan to conduct workshops or meetings, provide some service, develop products or curriculum or resources. You might train or assess or facilitate or partner with an institution or organization. You might provide information via social marketing and media. Next list who your participants are and who you plan on reaching. This might include clients, agencies, decision makers, and customers. The next section of the logic model to complete is listing the program investments that will be made or the program inputs. For the inputs component, list program investments like staff and volunteers, any time spent on the effort, money that's required, the research-based information you plan to provide, any materials or equipment, any technology that you might need, and any partners that will help. Next, you should note any significant assumptions and external factors related to the issue being addressed. Assumptions include our beliefs and ideas about the situation, the way the program will operate, or what the program expects to achieve and how the participants might learn and behave. Assumptions might also pertain to resources in staff, the external environment, the knowledge base, and the internal environment. Faulty assumptions are often the reason for poor extension program results. External factors include any aspects influencing the program or aspects that are influenced by the program, the cultural milieu or any values, the biophysical and political environments that exist, the economic structure in the community, demographic makeup, family and farm circumstances, experiences of the participants, perhaps media, policy, and priorities. These are elements that affect the program over which there is little control. The final section of the logic model template is to briefly summarize your evaluation design for the proposed program. A plan to evaluate your program is critical because otherwise, how will you ultimately know if your goals and objectives are met? The logic model helps with the evaluation design because it provides the program description that guides the evaluation process. A well-crafted logic model helps to know what and when to measure, match evaluation to the program, and focus on key important information. Let's review two examples of completed logic models. In this example of an Extension Master Gardener program logic model, both the situation and priorities highlight the public demand for horticulture information and the development of a trained volunteer group to assist extension agents in the community in the area of gardening education. For inputs, four are noted, including staff, volunteers, funds, and materials. For output activities, four are noted, including curriculum, volunteer training, volunteer planning meetings, and volunteer professional development activities. For output participants, community volunteers are listed. Four short-term outcomes are featured, including volunteers gaining knowledge, mastering curriculum, and achieving a certification designation, as well as increasing awareness of Extension's role. Five medium-term outcomes are noted, including volunteers maintaining certification status, practicing skills learned, presenting classes, interacting effectively with clients, and having positive perception of their role as a horticulture volunteer. Two long-term impacts are listed, the public having a positive perception of the Extension Master Gardener volunteers and Extension Master Gardener volunteers extending outreach of the Cooperative Extension Service. Assumptions include Extension continuing to have demand for horticulture information and local interest in service as Extension Master Gardener volunteers. An external factor includes the local Extension Office will have the staff, expertise, and resources to support this program. 
In this school gardening program logic model, you note the situation focuses on addressing childhood obesity and overweightness issue, as well as providing experiential learning activities for youth involving community members and parents. As priorities, we note our organization matching focuses of addressing childhood obesity, overweightness, experiential learning, and community involvement. Under inputs, staff, partners, research-based information, money, and materials are featured. For program outputs activities, nine different activities are listed. For program participants, there are teachers, students, school administrators, and volunteers listed. For short-term outcomes, eight are listed. For medium-term outcomes, three are noted, including growing and harvesting crops, preparing and consuming garden foods, and educating the public on ben the benefits of gardening. Long-term impacts include youth eating more nutritious food and working with families to grow home gardens, as well as community developing appreciation for the benefits of gardening. Assumptions include staff and school personnel are committed to the project, success at finding donor and optimal garden sites for success. External factors include local extension office has staff, expertise, and resources to support the effort, there are no disastrous weather effects, there's long-term security for the garden, and long-term commitment of the volunteers. The next two slides feature a checklist of items that will help you have the strongest possible logic model, according to Susan Barkman of Purdue University in her publication, Utilizing the Logic Model for Program Design and Evaluation. It asks, does the logic model include a listing of all inputs that will be needed for the program? Does the logic model include details of the activities listed? Does the logic model include a list of characteristics and intended number of targeted participants? Does the logic model make a sequential and logical connection between inputs, outputs, and outcomes? Then focusing on outcomes, it asks, do targeted outcomes help fulfill Extension's mission? Do targeted outcomes represent meaningful benefits or changes for the participants? Do targeted outcomes seem reasonable as a result of program participants in a non-trivial way? Do targeted outcomes clearly define the intended scope of the program's influence? Do targeted outcomes help the educator identify both points of success and problems of, that the program can correct? And do targeted outcomes provide data that is likely to be effective in communicating benefits to stakeholders. There are two formats of the logic model worksheet that you can download to your computer and use, a horizontal and vertical version. This is the horizontal version, and this is the vertical logic model worksheet. Both of these worksheets can be found at the ODE SharePoint site in the online training folder. You may want to pause the training at this time and locate these two worksheets. Download them to your computer so they'll be convenient when you're ready to develop your own logic model. An additional resource you might find helpful was developed as an online course by the University of Wisconsin Extension Service. It's titled, Welcome to Enhancing Program Performance with Logic Models, and is available online. It is a very thorough resource and it can help you develop top-notch logic models. You might want to review this site for your own personal growth and development. Let's summarize what we've covered. In creating a program logic model, the first task was to write about the situation and priorities of your issue. Next, you develop your expected long-term impact or changes to societal, environmental, civic, or economic conditions. Then you note your expected medium-term outcomes in terms of changes and actions. And then your short-term outcomes in terms of learning that is expected to occur. Next, you complete your planned program outputs in terms of participation and activities. Then you develop your input section of what you need in the way of program resources. You will also need to note what assumptions you're making as well as any external factors that exist. And finally, you would design your program evaluation. Thank you for viewing this presentation. I hope you will set a personal goal to get started in developing a logic model.